Dear Sri Lankan students, welcome you all to my video series about Grade 10 Mathematics. I'll give you a brief introduction about myself. My name is Migaram Mahavasana and I have majored in Mathematics and Computer Science. And currently I'm working at one of the leading international schools in Sri Lanka as a Computer Science teacher. And before my this teaching career, I have worked as a software engineer at one of the leading companies in Sri Lanka. Due to my passion that I had on teaching, I shifted from my engineering career to teaching career and I hope my lessons would be helpful for you in order to achieve your best with mathematics. Then I'll see you. Right, welcome children and I hope that you are ready for the first class of the video series. It's about perimeter. So when it comes to perimeter, I hope since childhood you are learning about perimeter. Perimeter is actually about the length around a shape, right? So you know there are so many shapes when it comes to objects around us. So you know there can be circles, there can be squares, rectangles, triangles, so many different types of shapes. So when it comes to these shapes, you have to have an ability to find the perimeter of these shapes. So we'll see what's the purpose of our first lesson. And we'll see what are the expectations of this syllabus. It says, by studying this lesson, you will be able to find the perimeter of a sector of a circle and solve problems related to and solve problems related to the perimeter of plane figures containing sectors of circles. If you have no idea about what is a sector, I'll be explaining that in a bit. Right. The first part of the textbook has given this perimeter of plane figures. So before moving on to perimeters of sectors, we have to have a brief idea about perimeter of plane figures, right? Okay. In previous grades, you have learned how to find the perimeter of plane figures such as rectangle, a square, a triangle, a circle. Facts relating to these can be summarized as follows. Right. We are given four shapes in this um, textbook and I'm pretty sure you find it really easy. So when it comes to the rectangle you have to add up the two lengths and the two breadths. So they have given it as a function on the right hand side as the perimeter. If you have any doubts on that you can put a comment on this and then I'll definitely explain that on my next class. Then the next one is about square. When it comes to a square you know it's the same size in all the four sides so you have to add up the length four times right so that gives you the perimeter of a square and then when it comes to a triangle you know if you take if you know the three uh, lengths of the sides then you can simply add it up that's it then when it comes to the circle you have to remember this equation which is 2 pi times the radius right okay Right. If you had a confusion about radius, I'm going to quickly explain that radius is the length from the center of the circle to the circumference. Remember that, right? Okay, good. Then we can see what's sect of a circle, right? It says the region which is shaded in this figure is a portion of a circle with center C, which is bounded by two radii and a part of the circumference, right? Children, you can see there's a circle. And then there's a light blue color pi. Looks like a piece of a pizza, right? Okay, great. So, to piece like this, we actually call a sector. But there's another important thing that I want to mention. So, as they have given three letters here, you can see A, C, and B. So, this A, C, B actually divides the circle into two sectors. A, C, B, the shaded one, is actually the minor sector. And then the remaining part, which is with the white color, we call that the major sector of the circle, right? Great. Then again, we'll continue back to the note. It says, such a portion is called a sect of a circle, right? It says, the angle theta. So this symbol might be new for you. Theta is actually one of the Greek letters. We use this symbol oftenly to denote one of the angles, right? Remember that. The angle theta, which is the angle between the two radii, 
ready in the sense now you can see children c is the center of this circle from c to a that's a radius and then again from c to b that's another radius so as there are two radiuses they call it ready right and then it says between the two ready is called the angle at the center <coughs> the angle at the center can uh, take any value from 0 to 360 you know children if you start from b or if you start from a and if you expand this angle you can if the two ready are close together it's zero so basically there will be no angle if the two radius are uh, close to each other but you can see if the angle is keep on expanding yeah. the CB line let's say it's moving and uh, CA line is um, at rest if CB straight line or the radius uh, keep on moving in order to expand the angle theta then it can literally reach to again CA so they can fall on top of each other so at that time you know one completes uh, it completes one circle that's gonna be a size of a 360 degree angle isn't it right amazing <coughs> then it says the angle at the center can take any value from 0 to 360 so I hope you got it cleared then the next part this says the sector that is obtained when the angle at the center is 180 degrees it is a semicircle it's obvious right you know if the complete circle takes a 360 degree angle then a half should take half of that 360 so if you take half of that 360 it should be children 180 very good then the next next uh, point it says the sector that is obtained when the angle at the center is 90 degrees so if you take this a c b angle and if this angle they have denoted it by theta if this theta becomes an angle of 90 degrees you know children it has to be a quarter of the complete circle yeah if it even if you take one fourth of 360 degrees it is it results a 90 degree angle right i hope this part was clear for you <coughs>